Hi there, George with eMachine Shop here to show you how to design and order real parts with eMachine Shop's Browser CAD. I'll be going through everything step by step to make sure you're getting your parts fast and simply. So to start, we're going to go through the main menus and toolbars that will house the tools and functions that we'll need to design our parts. Up top, we have our menu list that contain our file edit view, line, and a whole bunch of other functions that we'll be going into depth when we design our part with. Up top on our top toolbar are the common shortcuts to tools that we will be using in designing our parts. And on the left toolbar contains all of our drawing tools that we will be using to design our parts. So now we're going to be making a simple bracket together. And I'm going to show you how to draw it from scratch, edit it, and go through the ordering process as well. So first, we're going to go to the left toolbar and we're going to select the rectangle tool. By clicking in the workspace, moving our mouse and clicking again, we'll have created a rectangle. On the top toolbar, below our major functions that we talked about before, we will see the numeric bar has popped up. This allows for precise sizing, um, for the length and height of our rectangle, as well as its thickness or Z value, as we like to call it. So I'm going to set our length to five inches flat and our height to three inches. To make our drawing fit the screen, I'm going to click our first top toolbar tool, this magnifying glass, which is our uh, with the square in it, which is the zoom to fit screen function. This will put our drawing front and center so we can access it and see it full screen easily. So I'm going to set the Z value to 0.063. So I'm going to keep it as such. You can choose from a whole bunch of other thicknesses um, for any your application that you need. So we're going to click the pyramid on the top toolbar to view our part so far in 3D to see where we are. We can click and drag to see the 3D view as it is. We can see how thick it is and our part as a whole. We'll be referring to this as we go through to make sure our part is exactly how we want it. So next for our bracket, we want holes in each side. So I'm gonna click the circle drawing tool on the left toolbar, click in the workspace, move our mouse out, click again to make our first circle. You'll see again on the top toolbar, our numeric bar has shown our diameter for our hole. So we're gonna go with a quarter of an inch, 0.250 inches. And the Z value is gonna be set to air inside as it's removing material from where we are putting it. As this is gonna be a quick and simple bracket, I'm gonna make two holes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight our first hole that we made, and you could either hold Control C and then Control V as you normally would do to create a copy and paste, or you can go up to the top right of the top toolbar here, click in the repeat button, which is this button right here, and click in arrow key either on your keyboard or on the top toolbar over here and click again to make a copy of your selected shape. Just make sure that when you're done making your copies, you deselect the repeat tool. To remove uh, items and shapes, you can highlight the item or shape that you need removed and either select the delete key on your keyboard or go to the top toolbar X and click that to remove that. So now that we've drawn our holes and set them to air inside and we have them on our bracket, we want to precisely place them for our project. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First, we're going to take our holes and we're going to drag them to the snap points on the middle because I want my holes lined up on the middle of our bracket on either side. Next, we're going to go to the top right and set the nudge distance. Um, which is the distance that we will be moving our holes over from where we put them. And I'm going to put mine to half an inch, which is 0.5 inches in this entry box. And then from there, you can press the arrow key and move it over exactly that distance. I'm going to do this with both of our holes. As you can see, now that we have both holes in place, we can check the 3D view by clicking the pyramid button on the top toolbar. And this will bring up our 
3D view, which now shows our bracket with our two holes in it. Closing out of this, we can make our bend for our bracket. I'm going to put mine right down the middle, drag, clicking the line tool on the left toolbar, selecting the snap point in the middle of the top of our bracket, clicking, moving our mouse, and then attaching to the next snap point at the bottom of our bracket. Now that we've drawn our line, we want to go to the top toolbar and go to our line selection drop down and select bend while our line is highlighted, indicating that this is the line on which our bracket is going to be bent. I'm going to keep the bend angle up here on the numeric bar as 90 degrees, and we can check in the 3D view now that our bracket has now been bent with our holes in place, creating our simple bracket mount. To view our bend also in the workspace, I'm going to zoom out a little, and I'm going to select the view menu and model bends and click OK. What this is doing is going to model the bend angle to show which lines are bending where and what our bracket is going to look like from the side view. I'm content with what I'm seeing here, so I'm going to move on in the process. From here, I'm going to select my material in the top right of the top toolbar over here, and I'm going to select Aluminum 5052 as a popular um, and reliable material. For a finish, I want a black powder coat to fit my applications. And I'm going to select specifications to choose my tolerances and roughness. I'm going to keep my tolerance at about 0 0.02 inches. And I'm fine with a 2000 micro inches surface reference roughness. I'm then going to go up here since we have a bend and click on our bend specifications. And here we are going to set the radius of our bend tool, which I'm going to put to an eighth of an inch for my application. Selecting OK, we're ready to move on. We're going to go to the top right again and set our quantity. I need 15 of these brackets, so I'm going to select 15. And now we're ready to order. Before we do so, we want to make sure we're saving our project to our um, computer. So I'm going to go to File in the top menu, click Download, and save as our project name. For this one, I'm going to do Mounting Bracket. Click OK and select the file destination. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Now that we have our file saved, we're ready to get our price and order our brackets. So in the top toolbar, you're going to want to select the green check mark button. This will bring up the pricing dialog. And also run an analyzer on our design to make sure that we didn't mess up anywhere. Or if we can save money, where we can save money. You'll see on the right here that for powder coating, there's going to be a small spot of non-coverage where the part is hung, just giving us a warning. We, our design has these comments to self, which is our bend specifications that we've done earlier, as you can see. These will not be in the final project as they are just um, a visual for how our bend looks. You can delete them or as you as you wish. You can click on them and you'll see um, that these are comments up on the line type. I'm going to run the analyzer again just so we can see the rest of our notes and we'll move on. Moving down the list, we'll see that our part is 2D and we can have different designs on the same screen as we needed. We don't, so we're all set. We did our view model bench check right here as you can see. And we see here, this is important, that our design includes holes and we selected a powder coating finish. And that it's recommended to increase the diameter of holes by 0 0.005 inches to account for the thickness of the powder coat. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So clicking off the analyzer, we're going to select our holes. 
and each individually we're going to go to the numeric bar and type in plus 0 0.005. Now this will just add that to our diameter so we don't need to do the math especially in smaller and larger numbers. So now that we've handled all the analyzer warnings and recommendations and changed our holes to accept the black powder coat. We're going to run the pricing dialog one last time. And you'll see here that we get our price, our price per unit, and our estimated turn times. And you can mess around with your quantities here, like if you wanted 10, let's say at the end, you can instantly get another quote for what that would be. So here I just changed it to 10. And the price has reflected that now. So before you get to this pricing dialog, you'll be prompted to put in your zip code for shipping costs. Um, and you can select your shipping type, uh, your shipping medium in this drop down right here. I need my parts right away, let's say. So I'm going to click next day air, which will update the shipping. Um, but standard UPS ground is always free. We get see our total and then we're going to click order. So it's going to have, since we made changes to our design, it's going to have us redownload our project. It's important to do this all the time. Um, just to make sure you have a backup on your computer. So we're just going to save it as mounting bracket again to the desktop. Save that. Price one more time. Verify our prices here. Looks good. Verify our shipping medium. Looks good, UPS ground, free shipping, and select order. Here you can put in all your information, and once you're done with that, you just click submit, and then your parts will be on the way. Thank you for taking the time to design a bracket with me and learning how to design an order quickly and easily in eMachine Shop Browser CAD. We have manufactured millions of parts for our clients, and we're ready to manufacture your guys next. So if you need help in design ordering your parts or just want us to design parts for you, check out our links in the description um, or get in contact with us and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.